So this is the chemistry section, 14.2 lesson video, part two. So if you watch part one, we covered Boyle's Law and Charles Law, and I gave you the saying, Boyle is the VIP, Charles likes direct TV, Gay and Lusak will TP, the house directly next to me. So in this video, we're just going to pick up with Gay and Lusak's Law. So it says, Gay and Lusak will TP, the house directly next to me. So again, I color-coded everything for you. So gay lussacs Law states that the pressure of a gas is directly proportional to the Kelvin temperature. If you remember from Charles' Law, we got to have Kelvin. If the volume remains constant. So again, I color-coded it. So T is temperature, is directly proportional to pressure. So remember, directly proportional means if temperature goes up, then pressure goes up. So the formula is P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. And again, the ones are just the initial and the twos are the final. However, I also talked about in the first video that some of you are fractionally challenged, and so in that case, you'll want to cross multiply your formula. So P1 times T2 equals P2 times T1. Okay, and again, don't forget you have to have Kelvin. So Kelvin is Celsius plus 273. All right, so let's just jump in because at this point, you should be getting pretty good at these. So it says, the gas in an aerosol can is at a pressure of 103 kPa, so there's my P1, at 25 degrees Celsius, so there's my T1, but of course I have to change that to Kelvin, so I add 273 and I get 298 Kelvin. If the can is thrown into a fire, what will the pressure be, so I'm looking for P2, when the temperature reaches 928 degrees Celsius. So there's my T2. However, it is in Celsius, so I need to add 273 to get it to Kelvin, and so it becomes 1,201 Kelvin. Okay, so again, I see that this time I have P's and T's, so I know I'm dealing with Gay-Lussac's law, but I'm gonna have to rearrange it. So P1, T2 equals P2, T1. And so I'm solving for P2. So remember, to get it by itself, I just need to move T1 to the other side by dividing both sides by T1. So then P2 is P1 times T2 over T1. And so then I'm ready to plug in. So remember, if you'll write what is what and the question, it makes it easy to pull the numbers. So I have P1, so I find P1. It's 103 kilopascals times T2. So again, in Charles Law, I know you want the ones to be good. I know you want to do P1 times T1. We all want to do that. But that's not what the formula says. It's P1 times T2. So I find T2 and it's 1,201 Kelvin over my T1, which is 298 Kelvin. So those Kelvins cancel. And so remember, you multiply the top, divide the bottom. So 103 times 1,201 divided by 298. And so when I do that, I get 415 kilopascals. So I see our pressure goes from 103 to over 400 when you throw the aerosol can in the fire. So what happens? It ends up exploding. Okay, so that's why you don't put aerosol cans in your heat because you don't want them to explode. I mean, it'd be cool if it did, but I'm just saying. It's dangerous. <laughs> Alright, so if you're feeling confident, you can go ahead and try the next one. Otherwise, you can try this bottom one. So let's look at the next one. So it says a sample of nitrogen gas has a pressure of 6.58 kPa. So there's my P1 at 539 Kelvin. So there's my T1. Now, some of you, you get so used to me giving you Celsius and you always have to change it to Kelvin that when I finally give you Kelvin, you accidentally try to change it to Kelvin. Remember, when it's in Kelvin, just leave it. Don't add 273. If the volume does not change, what will be the pressure? So I'm looking for P2 at 211 Kelvin. So there's my T2. So see, I gave you Kelvin for both of them, so you don't have to change anything this time. All right, I see I'm dealing with P's and T's, so I know I'm using Gay-Lussac's law. So it's P1 T2 equals P2 T1. I'm solving for P2, so to get it by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by T1. And so then I'm left with P1 times T2 over T1. Now some of you, you like to plug in your numbers and then rearrange, that's fine. I just find that more difficult. But it's whatever you need to do to get the right answer. Some of you, you can do it in your mind and just type it in the calculator, that's fine too. All right, so we have P1, which is 6.58 kilopascals, times 
times T2, remember not T1, T2, which is 211 Kelvin, over T1, which is 539 Kelvin. So my Kelvins cancel, I'm left with KPA, so I do 6.58 times 211, divide by 539, and so I get 2.58 kilopascals. There we go. So hopefully you got that one right. If you didn't try that one on your own, pause it and try this one, and then we'll look at it together. So it says the pressure in a car tire is 198 kPa. So there's my P1. At 27 degrees Celsius. So there's my T1, but it's in Celsius. So I need to add 273, and it becomes 300 Kelvin. After a long drive, the pressure is now 225 kPa. So there's my P2. What is the temperature of the air in the tire? So this time we're looking for T2. All right, so I see I have P's and T's. I'm using Gay-Lussac's law again. So P1, T2 equals P2, T1. And so I am solving for T2. So to get it by itself, I divide both sides by P1. So T2 equals P2 times T1 over P1. And so then I'm ready to plug in. So, 225 kPa for P2 times T1, which I changed to Kelvin, 300 Kelvin, divided by my P1, which is 198 kPa. So again, our kPa's cancel, so I do 225 times 300 divided by 198, and so I end up getting 341 kPa. So hopefully you got that one right. So for Gay-Lussac's law, it's the same reminders as Charles' law. Make sure that temperature is in Kelvin, and don't try to put the ones together when they don't belong together in this formula. All right, so let's move on to another gas law that's not in my little saying, boil is the VIP. All right, so our final one that we'll talk about in this section, because yes, there are more, because there are more sections in this chapter. But the final one in this chapter we'll talk about is called combined gas law. And so all it does is it combines all three of them. So you see how Boyle talked about pressure and volume, Charles talked about volume and temperature, and then Gay-Lussac talked about pressure and temperature. Well, combined gas law just talks about volume, pressure, and temperature. So it talks about all three of them. So the combined gas law includes volume, pressure, and temperature. You can use combined gas law to help you memorize the other gas laws. However, in this class, you don't have to memorize it. Um, it'll be on your formula sheet. But again, it's in where you have a denominator and some of you are fractionally challenged, so just cross multiply. So it would be P1 times V1 times T2 equals P2 times V2 times T1. And again, your temperature has to be in Kelvin. Just know for this whole chapter, if it's a gas loss problem, the temperature has to be in Kelvin. And then your ones just mean your initials and your twos just mean your final. The only thing that's more difficult about a combined gas law than the others is that you just have two extra variables. Otherwise, it works the same as everything else. All right, so let's jump into them. Now, because you should be getting used to plugging into formulas at this point, I've thrown some little tricks into these problems. So that doesn't mean that they only happen with combined gas law. It just meant in the previous problems, I just wanted you to get used to plugging into formulas. And so now I want to show you little tricks that I might throw your way so that you can figure those out as we go. All right, so the first one, it says the volume of a gas-filled balloon is 30 liters, so there's my V1, at 313 Kelvin. So there's my T1, and it's already in Kelvin. And 153 kilopascals pressure, so there's my P1. What would the volume be, so I'm looking for V2, at standard temperature and pressure, or STP? So this is one trick that I might put on here, like on a question. Instead of telling you the temperature or pressure, I might say STP, I might just say standard temperature, I might just say standard pressure. So let's discuss what those are. Standard temperature is zero degrees Celsius when we're talking about gas laws. Of course, though, we have to add 273, so it's going to be 273 Kelvin. So if any problems in the gas law chapters talk about standard temperature, you need to know is 0 Celsius or 273 Kelvin. Now standard pressure is 1 ATM or 
760 millimeters of mercury or 101.3 kilopascals or 760 torr. Okay, so if you remember from chapter 13, this is our conversion factor for pressure units. Well, all of these are standard pressure. So how do you know which one to use? Well, if you look up here, I gave you pressure in kPa. So that means for this problem, I would pick 101.3 kPa to be my standard pressure. Now, let's say I gave you 153 millimeters of mercury. Then I would choose 760 millimeters of mercury to be my standard pressure. You just pick the one that has the same unit. Okay, so standard temperature is 0 degrees Celsius or 273 Kelvin. And standard pressure is any of these. You just pick the one that has the same unit as what I gave you in the problem. All right, so this was, of course, my T2. And this was, of course, my P2. So I can see now I have V's, P's, and T's. So that's how I know I'm using my combined gas law. So we have P1, V1, T2 equals P2, V2, T1. I am solving for V2. So to get it by itself, I divide by the other variables, which are P2 and T1. So V2 equals, and then I just write what I have up, P1, V1, T2 over P2, T1. All right, so let's start plugging things in. So again, this is where labeling everything helps a lot. So P1, I'll look up here. P1 is my 153 kPa times V1. So V1 is 30 liters times T2. Remember, the ones are not together. We want them to be, but they're not. So times T2, that's my standard temperature, which is 273 Kelvin, divided by my P2, which is my standard pressure, which in this case is 101.3 kilopascal, times my T1, which is the 313 Kelvin. So if you look, Kelvin cancels, kilopascals cancel. I'm left with liters, which is a unit for volume. So how do I solve this? Multiply across the top, divide by the bottom. So I do 153 times 30 times 273, and then I divide by both of these numbers. But really quickly, let's talk about what that looks like in your calculator. Um, and then I'll show you why I put parentheses. Okay, so most of you in your calculator, if you were going to put this in, you would put 153 times 30 times 273 divided by 101.3 times 313. When you do that, your calculator is not going to divide by this number. It's going to multiply by this number. So if you want to put a times in between them, you need to put the bottom in parentheses. Otherwise, you need to do 153 to times 30 times 273 divided by 101.3 divided by 313. And again, because I know most of you don't type it in that way because you're going to write a multiplication sign in between, you need to put the bottom in parentheses. You can always put the bottom in parentheses, but just make sure you do if you have more than one number under the um, division line. All right, and so once I multiply and divide for this one, I ended up getting 39.5 liters. Okay, so again, STP is not always in combined gas law problems. It's just if it does show up, remember, standard temperature is 273 Kelvin. Standard pressure is any of these. You just pick the one with the unit that you need. All right, so let's look at another one. All right. So if you're feeling confident, you can go ahead and try this one on your own. Just be careful about what it says at the very end. Otherwise, watch me do this one and you can try the last one. Actually, because I'm showing you tricks on this one, I would not try this one on your own. So it says a gas, <clears throat> sorry, a gas at 155 kPa, so there's my P1, and 25 degrees Celsius, so there's my T1, but it's in Celsius, so I gotta change it by adding 273. So it becomes 298 Kelvin, has an initial volume of one liter. So there's my V1. The pressure of the gas increases to 605 kilopascals. So there's my P2. As the temperature is raised to 125 degrees Celsius. So there's my T2. But again, I need to add 273. So this becomes 398 Kelvin. What is the new volume? So I'm looking for V2 in milliliters. Okay, so the thing is, 
if we solve this problem the way it's written, because my original volume is in liters, my answer will be in liters. It wants the answer in milliliters. So you have two options, and I'm going to show you both ways. You can convert one of the numbers before you plug it in. That's what I'm going to do first. Or down here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get an answer and then convert it. It doesn't matter which way you do it. I'll show you how both of them work. Okay, so it gave me one liter, but I know I need my answer in milliliters, and I know one liter is a thousand milliliters. So I'm going to go ahead and change it to milliliters before I plug it in. All right, so now I can see I have V's, P's, and T's, so I know I'm using combined. So P1, V1, T2 equals P2, V2, T1, and I am solving for V2 again. So I divide by P2 and T1. So my V2 is P1 times V1 times T2 over P2 times T1. So again, if you labeled everything, it makes it super easy to plug it in. So P1 is 155 kPa. V1 is 1,000 milliliters. Okay, remember, we went ahead and changed it to milliliters before we got an answer. All right, and then times T2, remember, I know you want it to be T1, but it's not, so that's 398 Kelvin. Over, remember, since I have two numbers on bottom, I'm going to put in parentheses. Over P2, which is 605 kilopascals, times T1, which is 298 Kelvin. So if you look, my kilopascals cancel, my Kelvin cancels, and I'm left with milliliters because I've already changed it to milliliters. So when I solve, my answer is already going to be in the right unit. So I do 155 times 1,000 times 398, and then I'm going to say divided by, I'm going to put these numbers in parentheses, 605 times 298, or divide by each of them separately. All right, so once I do that, I end up getting, um, what, what did I get for this one? 155 kPa. Oh, there it is. I got 342 milliliters. All right, I have my answers over here, but I was trying to make sure I was grabbing the right one. Okay, and since my answer was already in milliliters, I don't need to convert after the fact. I already converted before I plugged it in. All right, so I would try the next one if I was you. Just be aware that I gave you pressure in kilopascals, but I want your answer in millimeters of mercury. So remember, you can convert this number to millimeters of mercury before you plug it in, or you can get your answer in kilopascals and then convert it. All right, that's the way I'm going to do it to show you that it works either way. So pause it, try it. I'll assume you've done that at this point. So it says a 5-liter air sample, so there's my V1, has a pressure of 107 kPa, so there's my P1, at a temperature of negative 50 degrees Celsius, so there's my T1, but of course I need to add 273. Remember, it is negative 50, so it becomes 223 Kelvin. If the temperature is raised to 102 degrees Celsius, so there's my T2, but again, I need to add 273, so that becomes 375. And the volume expands to 7 liters, so there's my V2. What will the new pressure be? So I'm looking for P2 in millimeters of mercury, though. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in everything the way it is, get an answer, and then I'll worry about the millimeters of mercury. Okay, so once I realize there's V's, P's, and T's, I know I'm using combined. So we have P1, V1, T2 equals P2, V2, T1. I'm solving for P2 this time, so to get it by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by V2 and T1. So I get P2 equals P1, V1, T2 divided by V2, T1. Oh my gosh, I just love doing these so much. Ugh. What don't I love about chemistry though? Gas laws is like literally one of my favorite chapters though. I'm so excited we're finally in it. Alright, so then I just plug in what I got. So P1 is 107 kilopascals. V1 is 5 liters. T2, remember it's T2, is 375 Kelvin. I'm going to put those bottom ones in parentheses because there's two of them. So V2 is 7 liters. And T1 is 223 Kelvin. So if you look, my liters cancel, my Kelvin cancels. 
So I'm left with kilopascals. So I do 107 times 5 times 375 divided by parentheses 7 times 223 parentheses. And so what I'm going to get at that point is 128.5 kilopascals. I got kilopascals because that's what the pressure I used was in. However, they want the answer to be in millimeters of mercury. So instead of converting before I plugged in, I'm just going to convert now. So remember, we know 1 atm equals 760 millimeters of mercury, so forth and so on. So golden rule says kilopascals goes on bottom. In that conversion factor, it tells you 101.3 kilopascals equals, we're going to millimeters of mercury. In your conversion factor, it tells you it equals 760 millimeters of mercury. So kilopascals cancel. So I do 128.5 times 760 divided by 101.3, and I get 964 millimeters of mercury. If you're having trouble converting the pressure, you need to go back to chapter 13 to watch the video for 13.1. All right, so hopefully you got that right. And if you didn't, maybe you at least got this far, which is fine. You know you're new at doing these. All right, so let's go ahead and finish up this section then. So, so far we've learned boils, Charles, gay sex, and combined gas law. And so see, it's already starting to be a long list, and I'll just go ahead and tell you, though, if you watch the other lesson videos, there's still three more formulas, okay? So you really got to keep them all straight. All right, so let's knock out this section assessment. So it says, how are the pressure and volume of the gas related at constant temperature? Well, this is where if you know your saying, you know the answer. So it says pressure and volume. Well, boil is the VIP. So what does I mean? It means they're inversely related. Inversely related. So if one goes up, the other goes down. All right, so inversely related is for number one. Number two, if pressure is constant, how does a change in temperature affect the volume? Well, now we're talking about temperature and volume. Well, Charles likes direct TV. That means temperature and volume are directly related. So you could either say they are directly related, or you can say if temperature goes up, volume goes up, because directly related means they do the same thing. Number three, it says, what is the relationship between temperature and pressure of a contained gas at constant volume? Well, again, if you know the saying, you know the answer. So it's T and P, so Gay and Lucette will TP the house directly next to me. So temperature and pressure are directly related or directly proportional. So number four, in what situations is the combined gas law useful? Well, in situations when you have volume, temperature, and pressure. You have all three, volume, temperature, and pressure. So number five, number five, we now know four different laws. So now I'm going to show you how to tell which formula to use. So it says a given mass of air, because notice it doesn't tell me which formula to use here. A given mass of air has a volume of six liters. So I'm going to label that as V1 because I know volume is liters. At 101 kPa, so I know that's a pressure, so that's my P1. What volume will it occupy? So I know I'm looking for a V2 at 25 kPa. Well, I know that's a pressure if the temperature does not change. So once I label everything, I can see, oh, I have V's and P's, so I need to use Boyle's Law. So if you'll label everything, then figuring out which formula to use is very easy. All right, so I know Boyle's Law says that P1 V1 equals P2 V2. I'm solving for V2, so to get it by itself, I divide both sides by P2. So V2 equals P1 V1 over P2. For Boyle's Law, I don't have to worry about temperature, so I can plug in everything as it is because my pressures are in the same unit. So I do P1, which is 101 kPa, times V1, which is 6 liters, divided by P2, which is 25 kPa. So those kPa's cancel. I'm left with liters, so I do 101 times 6 divided by 25, and I get 24.2 liters. All right, so the gas laws are not that difficult, and it's very easy if you will do like I did and label before you try to solve. Because once you label, you can figure out which formula to use, and then you can go from there. All right, so hopefully you find gas laws as awesome as I do.